Hello, this is Robert Messina, and I have a uh, new topic, and the new topic uh, came up when I was thinking about uh, Yehoshua, my, the Messiah, as uh, the groom, and I as part of the bride. So he, Jesus has a beard, and I have a beard, and there's so, there's there's a barrier that makes that makes it a certain barrier there that I have to leap over in order for me to get comfortable with being um, part of the bride of Christ. And females have a, have to have a uh, have a hurdle as well, but theirs is different. They we both have hurdles we have to. We have to uh, uh, cross, and um, that's going to be uh, the topic of the of the of this video. And uh, I'm going to go over both the kinds of hur different kinds of hurdles, and give you some background on on what I am talking about. I want to start out lyrics of a love song that talks about the beginning of love, two soulmates beginning to cement and uh, regard each other as possible soulmates in their life and becoming man and wife. In other words, it starts out with a possibility and if everything goes well on both sides, it ends up as something that happens and it should happen for the, the entire life of both male and female. And that's the right way to do it. Anyway, the, the tune is Getting to know you Getting to know all about you Getting to like you Getting to know you like me And, and that that's the that's all I'm gonna go with. That's the beginning of the cement is what I call it, where uh, two are getting to know each other, two are getting to like each other, and two are getting to um, be happy about they like each other, and um, it's hap they're getting happy that that they know that the other one likes them. Anyway, so that's the, the beginning cement, and uh, that's uh, something that is an analogy. That the analogy of of a of a, a believer becoming a believer and knowing that that the Savior loves him, and that and and knowing that uh, that he loves the Savior. And there's a love affair. The cement is starting to work in those same words. Because we get, we are getting to know him in the very beginning. We're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. And we're going to see different things happen in our lives. And we can see the ch some changes and some things that reveal to us that it, it, it's a beautiful thing. I'll sing it again. Getting to know you, Jesus Getting to know all about you. Getting to like you. Getting to know you like me. And with that one, you can right away put love me. Like getting to love you. Getting to know you love me. Adam, when Adam, Adam knew his wife Eve. When they loved each other, he, Adam knew his wife. So it's getting to know you. You see, the cement is starting to pile up and get stronger. The, fi the, the fingers are starting to lock in co closer. It's a walk with him that is a beautiful walk, and there's nothing wrong with all of that part. And like I said, there's just that little barrier that I have that he has a beard, I got a beard. And with the women, with the women it's a little different in the sense that a woman gets excited to get married because the man has the ability to fertilize her womb and let her 
get a little more importance of being a person and being more fruitful but by being fruitful and, and bearing children. And that's something that they, they have a desire for and they need the man to do that. And the, they want the man to be special and they don't want the man to leave and it's not an easy choice for them. Now, Jesus does not offer a child for the for the for women he offers love as the, as their as their husband for life for everlasting life but he doesn't offer them children there's no marriage or given in marriage in the next life which is his life He's absent with us now, but we're going to be with him, and when we, when we are with him, we're with him as he is. The same way. We're, we're in a resurrected, glorified body that's strong. We're clothed, beautiful. We are as a bride that has cleansed and, and um, readied herself with gowns and perfume and all of that. She's purified for her husband. And that's the, that's the, uh, the, the tr tribulation period, actually. But everybody goes through tribulation and they get cleansed through that even if they're not in the trip, even if they lived uh, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Well, we're about to go into the tribulation. But that's okay. It's the, it's the purification, like I said, of, of, of getting the wife ready. Now, what I was saying about the female barrier, she, uh, women, women have a desire to please their husbands with children, by bearing children for them. They want children, and they want to feel more important. And I get that because of uh, the, the women that don't have children, they feel like uh, they're missing something. They, 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 they feel sorrowful that they, that they don't bear. Sarah didn't didn't bear until she was ninety. The her whole life she went without without a child, and she's the princess of of thousands. She's the mother of thousands, and thousands. I just want to give like one example here: uh, Leah having her third child. Genesis twenty nine thirty four, and Leah conceived again and bear a son, and said, Now, this time, will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons, and therefore was his name called Levi, which means to be joined unto. So that's uh, just one of 12 examples uh, with with only with only Jacob and, and his wives, his two wives, and his two Handmaids, the, their two handmaids. So he had, he had, uh, six, he had twelve children, with uh, six from Leah, two from Rachel, and f two from each of the two handmaids. Now let's go to the example of um, uh, a good example of the of what I call the barrier with where a woman prefers to have children and she'd rather, in other words, so Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. What are the chances of one woman amongst the thousand that she's going to have a, ch a son or a daughter through Solomon who has seven, who has seven hundred wives and three? So, in other words, there's only three hundred and sixty-five days in a year, and uh, if he has a thousand, I'm going to say the concubines are wives because they bear children too. Uh, if he, if he sleeps with a thousand women, that means there's three hundred and thirty wives a year. One year he can only have three hundred and thirty of them. There's thirty days left after that. So what's the chances? 
the the the, the, the if, if if the first one sleeps with him the first night, she has to wait three years later before she's gonna he's gonna see her again. I mean, just I'm just saying, I don't know how they did it, and I don't you know it has it's none of my business. But I tell you one thing, he had to have something going on for him because uh, the Song of Songs is a bestseller for man and wife. And it does, and you have to keep in mind though, it's prophetic for the bride and the, and the bridegroom of the Lamb. And it clearly shows how the bride is crazy about the king. So they love him very, very much. But y y guess what? The numbers for the children of Solomon are extremely low. Extremely low. Almost nothing. He only had one son that became king. The other son that he had is, is only, it's only, it's not even in the Bible. It's not even written in the Bible. But it's a legend. It's a legend. Uh, uh, but Solomon did have um, two daughters. He had two daughters. Two sons and two daughters. And one of the sons is only a legend. The only recorded king that he had, a son that he had in the Bible is Rehoboam. Okay, so let's ask 1 Kings 14, 21. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned with reigned in Judah, Jehoam, and was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And his mother's name was Nehemiah an Ammonitess, Am, from Ammon, the, 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 the Ammonites. Now, the Ammonites aren't Israel. So he has that one son, and it's not even a daughter of Israel. Uh, she's probably one of the thousand. But I don't know. Nobody knows. It doesn't say. And, and, uh, and, and as far as his daughters go, 1 Kings 4, 11, the son of Abinadab, which had Tephath, the daughter of Sab Solomon. So one of, his wife, one of his daughters was named Tephath. And... Uh, She's that's recorded in First Kings four eleven and First Kings four fifteen. It talks about Ahimaaz was in Naphtali, and he also took Basmath, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. So right there, there's only two recordings of daughters that Solomon had. So he didn't have too many. He wasn't. I mean, he had a lot of wives, but he was only one man, and I don't think he was infertile. I think I don't know what happened, but I don't have to know. Now, the, as far as the um, tradition goes, the, the question, I did, I did this in, in Google. I said, did King Solomon have a son with the Queen of Sheba? The answer that they gave was, according to Ethiopian tradition, their emperors were descendants from... Menelik the first, who was the son of Solomon and the queen of Sheba, thus founding the royal Solomonic dynasty of Ethiopia, which ruled until deposition of Haile Selassie the first in 1974. That that last, lasted. That that dynasty lasted from the time of Solomon to 1974 in Ethiopia. And I, be I believe it. I do believe it because uh, I see evidence of Jewishness in Africa. In Africa and that's why the, the, the Jews allowed Africans to come and be part of Israel. They were, they were allowed to make Aliyah, and they actually got the plans and, and brought them into the country because they, they accepted it, and they believed it themselves. 
and it wasn't like they weren't doing anything Jewish. They they lived. They gave the evidence of being Jewish. Again, goes back to the question: Why with a why would a woman want to be a, a wife of Solomon if she had little chance of having a child with him? Uh, she probably has a guy named Zev who lo- who likes her, and she could. There's probably ha- she probably had choice. First of all, if she's going to be picked by Ch- Solomon, she's probably very beautiful. So so there are probably other choices she could have. No, but but the, but she chooses to be the wife of the king, knowing that there's little chance of having child. And there, were, I, I don't even know if any of them had a child, because you know, the king's name, the Rehoboam, Rehoboam's mother was an Ammonite. She wasn't an Israelite, and uh, he had two daughters. Okay, doesn't say uh, who, who their wives were, but any even if they were Israelites. They 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 weren't they, they weren't giving a, a king or or they weren't giving a male child. They were giving a daughter. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying if they were if they were Israelites, because there had to be something. Israel had, one of those thousands had to do something because because the other uh, wife that had a, that had a son. Was a uh, queen of Sheba. She's not from. Is- she's not an Israelite, and the the daughter of Pharaoh was not an Israelite. So it's almost as almost as if the thousand that Solomon had was a complete representative of the bride of Christ. Complete in the sense that the bride of Christ does not have does not bear children to him, to his, to their bride. We don't bear children to Yehoshua, our bridegroom, all right? We just don't. It's not part of it. And the, and the, the love that these women had that married Solomon anyway is because they had such a, a high respect for the king. He was the king, and he was the king of Israel, and they admired him so much. They all they they had to give up not having children, but they did, and they were happy. Now, the men of Israel had a high regard for the king as well, but they didn't love him that much. Where they wanted to be his wife, that just wasn't there. This is this is not spirit. This is flesh we're talking about. Getting to know you is a, a, a soul made of flesh, with soul made of flesh. That's what that that's what that tune, those lyrics are about. Soul made of spirit, with soul made of spirit is beyond, because we are born again of the spirit. And there's no way we can enter without being born again. We would never be called worthy without being born again. We have to be in the spirit. And the love has to be the spirit. And the flesh is, go- I think the flesh is going to, the flesh will be there for the thousand years. You, can, you could count on that. Because we're going to get a new resurrected body all right and the the we're going to get a resurrected body the way Jesus had a resurrected body when when Jesus had his resurrected body he had bones and he showed his bones to the disciples he showed his bones he showed Thomas the the cuts in his hand and 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 uh, Thomas touched them, and Thomas touched his side where the spear went. And Thomas knew who he was when he did that, and he said, "Well, the, he didn't believe 
But when he did that, when he touched them, he believed. He said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, you believe because you see? How happy are those that believe and they don't see? So you and I are better off because we don't see. Because I totally believe it, and I, I wasn't there. I don't see it. I be, just believe it. So I have, a, I have a little bit of an edge. The disciples have a way bigger edge over what I have because their disciples walk with him and, and learned of him and were right there when they saw a lot more than I see. Now that's okay. I, I still believe, and I wasn't there is what I'm saying. I want to hone in on more about how the bride is neither male nor female. He's, he's also neither Jew nor Greek. He's either neither bond nor free. Okay? There's, in other words, if you're a slave here on this earth, you're not a slave when you cross, I'm going to say when you cross the, to the other side, meaning that you are now in the millennium. You go from time, which we're in now, to a thousand years, which is as one day. Okay? There's, where there's no time. You, you they make, there's a, there's a hop there. There's, a, there's a, a boundary that happens after the sound of the seventh trumpet. If you're a slave here, you're not going to be a slave anymore. If you're um, a Jew here, you're not going to be a Jew anymore. How, how could that be? Well, because there is neither, there's neither Jew nor Greek, according to Galatians 28, 328. And there's neither male nor female. So we all get different bodies, and it's the same kind of a body. Strong, okay? So the, the, there's no more, the female that was here is not the weaker vessel over there. And the one who had to keep silent here can talk over there. In fact, nobody has to teach anything over there because the, the knowledge of the Lord is going to be as the waters cover the sea. There was not going to be a need to teach anymore. We're not even going to need the Bible. We don't even need the Bible anymore. The 66 books that are in the Bible are part of the 66 of, of man where we needed it when we are men. The same thing with the gifts of the Spirit and everything. Everything passes away that we have now and it goes into a much, much greater glory. And the main thing, the main thing that changes is the light. The difference, the biggest difference is the light. Let's, let's look at the Job 33:28. So I'm going right now, I'm going to talk about the difference between the sunlight that we have now and the light of the world, which we will have on the other side, okay? Because on the other side, we're going to have his light, no sunlight. There's not going to be a sunlight, no, not a moonlight, nor a starlight. And, and it's all, the, the, his light is only going to be for us. And there's a perimeter for us to live in, you know, a big perimeter from uh, the river of, of, of not the Nile River to the, to the Euphrates River and uh, the, the uh, Mediterranean Sea. And that big, that big, huge place is our perimeter. It's a, it's a really big area. There's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of us because if you look, if you count the stars, you're gonna you're gonna see that you're gonna need a lot of space for us, and we're all gonna have beautiful areas. Everything's gonna be beautiful. This is something to look for. This is something to be glad that He is going to prepare a place for us. Right now, he's preparing a place for us. And he's coming back, and he's going to live with us, 
and the place he's preparing for us is even is not even the big perimeter we have here on this earth, which is going to pass away. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and that's going to be the new Jerusalem, and that's where we're going to say, that's us, the bride, we're in there. We're part of that. And there's a room, there's a mansion for, for each one of us. I, I'm just saying that the difference is the light. Because when, because the, when the best example I have is Nathan when he was 15 years old, and for 15 minutes he um, clinically died, and his his soul, his soul as a spirit went up, and he went up to what he called lower gone Eden, the lower area of the Garden of Eden thing I wanted to let you know about when he did that is that he was in a light and the light that he totally amazed with he was infatuated with that light that he was in and it seemed to be it had different levels of warmth and and love it was a light of love okay so this light of love is the thing that makes the difference, which makes me understand that it's totally different, that I don't have to worry about his beard and my beard. But everybody might have beards, but it's not the beard that we, we're, we're happy with. We're happy with the, the light. We're happy with the light. It's, it's something that's, that we don't want to give up. He was offered, Nathan was offered, do you want to stay here? He almost wanted to stay there because of the light. But he wanted to come back because that he wanted to be able to um, change and get more um, rewards so that when he came back, he would be in a better, he would be in a better light, an even greater light. And uh, that's the way they express it. They, they, Jesus used to say rewards. But, but I think the reward I think the rewards of uh, uh, how great the light that you're going to be getting into is how great that is and as far as I as far as I'm think of I think of it the, the worst thing that could happen is you build with with uh, wood hay and stubble you have a foundation and upon that foundation you build with wood hay and stubble instead of building with precious uh, metal uh, and uh, precious stones okay things that are are going to endure forever things that will will outlast a fire so when the fire hits and the wood if you built with wood hay or stubble you have to escape that fire and you have to you have to be thankful that you have a you 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 escaped and and that's but that's you're at the lowest level there as far as the as far as the light goes which is it's just not going to be bad because his light even the low light is is wonderful i wouldn't recommend not building you know not paying attention to you the foundation that you have to build on I would recommend building with as best as you can on that foundation, because you want you would prefer to be in the warmer light. However, even if it's only one, uh, only the guy with the two talents, he had one, he had he had two, but he, but then he got two more. All right, the guy, but the guy who had one, even that one was taken away because he didn't invest it right. So we have to be careful of that part. We got to pay attention to what he tells us here. We have to we have to make sure we have a, a wedding garment. We have to make sure we endure until the end. We have to make sure that we don't deny his name. There are things we have to do to make sure that we're in that light and that we are accepted worthy. And you hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. And talk, let's talk about the difference of the different lights now. Job 33, 28. 
He will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. So he, he will deliver his soul. So in other words, you have a judge that will deliver your soul from going into the pit. So you won't go into the pit. You won't go into the lake of fire. And your life will see the light. The light that we're talking about. This everlasting light. Your, light, your life is going to see it. So you see, life and light are connected right there with the judgment of not going into the pit. Psalm 36, 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. In with thee, Jesus, is the fountain of life. Now, the fountain of life is a fountain, and, and I'm thinking of it as a as a, a, a a fountain of wine that we take. We drink of his life. We have everlasting life with the cup. We have bread of life that we eat and we never get hungry again. But it's the it's the cup, it's the belief of the with uh, the drink of the wine that redeems us and buys us. So we drink of the fountain of life and we have light and we shall see light. We have his light and we shall see that light. See? We're going to be like Nathan, seeing the light, being happy about the light, and, be, and, and wanting to stay in the light. Wanting to go higher, wanting to go into the higher, warmer light. Okay, uh, and then we have John 1, 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of of men, so you see this connection: the light and the life. What is the when you, when you have a lamp? What does the light do? Oh, it gives you light, right? And you can see, and you can you can understand, and you could read, and you could know, and you could you could st study. You gotta have another thing. You gotta have is you gotta have oil in your lamps. Ten virgins, five foolish, five not. The five not had oil in their lamps. And that it was something that they had to get before the end came. That's the same thing with the wedding garment. He had to have that before the end came. You have the, 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 the bride had to be prepared before the wedding. The sanctuary is cleansed after 2,300 days which is almost seven years, 280 days less than seven Hebrew years. Prepare, cleanse. And John eight twelve. then spake Jesus unto them, again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You see? Light and life are connected. And that's overcoming the barrier. That's why I can understand overcoming the barrier because we're not in flesh anymore. We don't have genitals. We're not the same thing. Okay, let's, let's read um, Luke 20, 33 through 36. So this was a question. The, 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 the Sadducees come up with G to come to Jesus and have a question to him, and, and, and they, they're talking about how uh, they, they're trying to uh, come up with a, a, an example where you can't have life after death, a resurrection, because of this example that they're giving him. And they, they, they have the example of uh, the, a woman that has a husband, the husband dies, but that that husband had six brothers, and uh, every single one of those brothers did the, well, availed themselves to, to bring uh, to bring the, their brother seed, and um, but they each one of them died too soon to have ch child, and then the woman dies. Okay, so now the 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 woman dies. And they're going to say, okay, who, 
is she going to be the wife of in the resurrection? Because they all had her to wife. So that's okay, okay. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven had her to wife. And Jesus answered and said to them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are children of God, being the children of the first resurrection. I put first in there because there's a first resurrection, which is the thousand years, and after the thousand years, there's a second resurrection of everybody. And blessed are those that are in that first resurrection. Some more on that. Zechariah 12, 11 through 14. Now, in that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadad Drimon in the, in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, their wives apart, the, f the family of the house of Levi, Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shemai apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. So I'm bringing that out to show you that the, they are, they're going into the, the, the next world with out their wives. They're going to be apart from their wives. They're going to be part of their lineage. They're, they're going to be, I'm going to be part of my father and his, his father and his father and his father. And uh, if my father, if one of my fathers, one of my ancestors didn't make it, then um, I, I'll still be a part of the one before him, I think. I think, I think it'll still be a connection, but it's gonna can be a connection even if you, even if you, your father, you don't have anybody in your lineage that was worthy to go, but you are. You're still gonna be going to go. You, you could go all the way up to to Noah, because we all come from Adam, and we all also come from Noah. And Noah's going to be there. He's going to be there. So yeah, there's no worry about, you know, wh who's going to be your, your lineage when you go there. But you're going to be connected to your lineage. And the woman is going to be connected to her father's lineage. And um, the children, your children, are part of your. The man, the man has children. Those are going to be in his. The son and daughters are going to be part of his. Uh, lineage. Okay, I'd like to uh, wrap it up with a couple of verses in Revelation. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4. This is John, the apostle, talking. He says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So, the earth that we're on now has passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So she's been through the last seven years. She's been through the 2,300 days, and she's prepared and adorned for her husband. Yehoshua our Mashiach. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with, is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, 
and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. When he sees the new Jerusalem and he says that there's new heaven and a new earth, we've passed a thousand years and we've, we've passed uh, the white throne judgment and the law has passed away because heaven and earth has passed away. And um, so we no longer need the law anymore, which we did need and did do during the thousand years. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Now, this, this could be, this, this third verse here, could be still the millennium time, because it fits the millennium time that we are, I think the rest of what I'm going to read is, still fits the millennium time. Because, like I said, there's not that much that they talk about with the New Jerusalem. But, but it, it doesn't matter. It's almost the same. And, you know, it's, uh, it's sort of like the thousand years is like an engagement for the, for the bride and, and, his, and the lamb. It's sort of like an engagement period. And so they're very similar anyway. It's just that in one case, we're still on this earth, which is... And in the other case, we have a new heaven, a new earth. That's the diff That's a big difference. I kind of think that those uh, verse one and two are only for the um, new Jerusalem, and then everything after that I'm going to be reading is probably still for the millennium period, because it just it just reflects what what what's going to happen. Okay, I want to uh, say that um, I do feel pretty strong about uh, the verse, the first and second verse. Uh, see, John sees the New Jerusalem, and uh, I do think that the third verse be continues with the the uh, thousand years, uh, describing the thousand years again, and I do think. Is the, there is a difference in the sense that the New Jerusalem is when we are f married, completely married, and the thousand years is when we are in 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 a uh, engagement. I do feel pretty strong about that, and I think also that the the divide there is a divide between the engagement and the marriage and it's a big divide in the sense that we are still in the sixth day before be, when heaven and earth pass away we go into the seventh day of rest all right the sixth day we are still in the sixth day like i say many times in other videos as well we are going to be completing and fulfilling the law as the way the Lord always wanted it to be done during those thousand years, all right? We're going to have Sabbaths, and if we're going to be having Sabbaths, we have to work. And one of the things he points out that we're going to be burying, we're going to be employed Burying the bones of the Battle of Armageddon, the, the bones of that battle are going, that we're going to be burying those bones. We got to go all the way to um, Jezreel to, uh, and we're from wherever we're living, and we're going to be uh, coming back. And we're going we're gonna to be burying bones for seven months. All right? So we're going to be working. We're gonna, and it says we're going to be having Sabbaths. So you can't have a Sabbath without working six days before that. Uh, but once we enter into the new Jerusalem and we're completed, the, the divide is, is in back of us, and we're in that rest, when well, there's not going to be any more, any more um, work. That we can, we can know because we're entering into 
the rest of the Lord, which is the seventh day, which is written back in Genesis. That the seventh about the seventh day, and you notice that there's no evening or morning in that one. There's no mention of it because there's no more. We're out completely out of time, completely. During those thousand years, there were men on earth that were in time. That had to live in time. Because the, because uh, that's it. That's how they had to do. There was still 280 days left, and, and they were living in time, <coughs> experiencing the seven vials of wrath. So that was still going on when we were having our thousand-year reign. And it's a thousand-year reign, and it says forever and we're going to reign forever and ever, which means <clears throat> when we go to the seventh day, it's still going to be, you can still consider it we are reigning with the Lord in his kingdom, complete kingdom, his complete rest. It is going to be a different kind of a reign because there's not going to be any enemies to go over us. <laughs> there aren't any enemies when we're here reigning on the thousand years either. There's no more enemies. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be, be, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 22 verses 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God, and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the, for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And he said that in the first verse. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be there. So it's repeated twice for that. And his servants shall serve him. Now remember, being a servant is great in the kingdom of heaven. And the servant is right near his light. That's, those servants are right in his light. The, the, the light that we were talking about that has different levels. So they are re truly, they, they, they lo love they love being there in his presence. And they shall see his face. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. His name shall be in their foreheads. Remember the high priest has, he has the name of God in his turban on the top. There's a, there's a gold plate that says, Yikadesh Shemka, your, your name be kept holy. And there shall be no night there. Remember I was saying there's no more night. And they shall need no candle, neither light of the sun. See, no more sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Okay, so however you want to put the where we are in, in 20, I think only 21, the first and second verse, talk about the New Jerusalem, and that's about it. I think everything else is still the old heaven and the, the, old, and the old earth, and we're still in the thousand year time. That's me. But it doesn't matter. Like I said, they're almost similar because, because engagement, love, engagement love and marriage love are almost the same thing, especially where the love is, not, uh, is, is 
like this whole video was about. It's it was about the the light. His light is the love that we get from him, that we desire. Just the light. We get the light either way, and either way, either of the New Jerusalem or or the thousand years, we're going to be getting that light. And all we got to do is go get over a couple of hurdles that may, may that may prevent us. But to understand how great it's going to be and how different it's going to be and how good God is and and he's not going to do everything when you're not you're going to you're not even going to want it so don't don't let a don't let a hurdle for the men you have a beard he has a beard so for the women he's not going to give you a child anymore so it's different he's going to give you that warm loving light he's going to be your husband that loves 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 you all right. Shalom, everybody. Take care. Like, like we say, Jesus loves you.